Hey, welcome back. What's going on there, folks? It is the Earthmaster here on this end of the weekend. It is Sunday. Uh, well, Monday, excuse me. <laughs> Goodness, I was having a repeat moment there. Uh, it is Monday, unfortunately. Uh, January 8th, 2024, 11.56 a.m. here, California time. And uh, latest activity shows, uh, looks like a two-pointer up in Alaska and also a 3.8 out here across the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, did see some movement up around the Iceland area overnight. So let's go ahead and check that out first before we go into the earthquake activity. Uh, there across the Iceland region, we're going to check the last 12 hours of earthquake activity. Got a little bit of swarming going on up north here across this, uh, this rift zone that's away from the Grindavik area. Uh, I believe this is stress related up here north of Iceland. Um, not a big deal. We, a we actually see quite a bit of activity out here on occasion. Uh, the area of interest, though, for right now is down around the Greendavik area, where we only have, well, it looks like two earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. So uh, it doesn't look like anything has really ramped up there uh, for now. As far as the informational statement goes from the Icelandic Met Office, well, they haven't put one out. So that means that things are... Uh, um calm for now but uh, still looking at the potential of eruption going on across the uh well outside the Greendavik area uh, and that is due to the elevated uh, inflation that's going on there across the region here's the inflation chart still showing the showing that it's going up and up and up here this is the up vertical displacement uh, and it, it looks like we are higher than that previous uh, level uh, back in December, right before the uh, Fisher activity opened up there uh, outside of the Hagefell region. So we'll continue to watch that and report back on it. But for now, things are just, um, it's a waiting game. All right, West Coast activity. A little bit of movement across the uh, Clear Lake volcanic field. This is the Calpine hydrothermal operations out here in full swing. Typical movement out there. Uh, getting some activity up here north into the Pacific uh, Northwest area outside of Mount Rainier once again. Look at these quakes all on the western crest here of the Cascade Mountains. I believe that's stress related there. Um, not anything to do with volcanic activity. Most of the time we get those uh, uh, these fault systems up here across the Cascades activated due to strain and stress out here. Uh, against the plate boundary, which would be the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, so no specific uh, volcano activity uh, that we're watching, but there is one little earthquake here across Mount St. Helens, but for the most part, this is all stress-related up there in the, uh, the Cascades. A um, little bit of activity here outside of Reno once again. Uh, they had seen a little swarm of activity in the last uh, week or so. Looks like that movement may be migrating southward slightly here across the area around Carson City. Uh, but again, that's all small microquake activity. Uh, low earthquake activity here across Long Valley Super Volcano. It's a 1.2, uh, about 7 o'clock this morning. Not a big one. It's just a little bit of activity stirring up there earlier this morning. And uh, far as 2.5 and above goes, let's see what we got. We did have a little bit of activity out here. Uh, looks like a 3.1 outside the Ridgecrest area. Uh, just north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. I'm sure they felt that three-pointer. Uh, most of the time you can feel three-pointer, depending on if anyone's uh, out there sleeping or if they're uh, remaining calm. They should be able to feel that. About 10 kilometers deep, it has been reviewed. Uh, one person, looks like reported feeling that earthquake out there about 7 o'clock this morning. As uh, far as the rest of California goes, um, a handful of earthquakes out here across the area, but nothing above 2.5. No major swarming going on. Uh, one little earthquake outside the... Um, well, this is kind of the region where we've seen that uh, four-pointer kick up. A little 1.4, 8 o'clock this morning. So I'm going to continue to leave the earthquake watch up uh, through the day if we don't see any further activity throughout the... Uh, the day period then we'll bring it down but uh hard to say if we're going to see any further activity out here uh, following that 4.2 a couple days ago uh, yellowstone national park seeing some movement up here it looks like some ones and uh, even a two-pointer 
So let's double check that, see what's going on up there in Yellowstone. Uh, earthquake activity is going to look like this. That's uh, specifically earthquake activity here, and there's a handful over the last 24 hours. Not really seen any swarming uh, to uh, report out here. Uh, broader view still shows some activity out in Texas and um, out here in the east. A little bit of movement around South Carolina and uh, one earthquake there in Tennessee from yesterday, 2.4. So what do we got going on for the broader view? Any large-scale activity overnight? Well, let's see what we got for the largest. Um, that's from yesterday, today's quake, a 5.2 over here across the Java Trench, uh, just off the coast here of Sumatra. So no big large-scale activity overnight. Uh, just kind of continuing to watch this. It's been somewhat, basically somewhat quiet here over the last couple days. You know, a handful of earthquakes here and there in your typical zones. Uh, one earthquake right now, 4.4 in Iran. Uh, that just coming in here within the last half an hour. Uh, got a little bit of activity up in China as well, it looks like, from uh, earlier earlier this morning. Uh, far as the region south here, uh, still getting some shallow earthquake activity up here across this region. Most of the time, um, if we go back the last week or so, uh, we see these deeper quakes in the area of the Tonga Trench. A lot of times we'll see that migration of earthquake activity and pressure uh, along this plate boundary. But it looks like we're starting to see um, some stress up at the surface levels. Uh, that could kick up further today, uh, potentially, after seeing all this deeper activity here in the last week. So we'll keep an eye upstream. Uh, there's also... Um, couple different quiet zones out here. Solomon Island still really hasn't moved all that much uh, in the last week across this area. The plate boundary stretches uh, a few hundred miles here from about Santa Cruz Islands um, uh, northwestward here along this plate boundary. So keep an eye on that. Uh, New Zealand's down here just sitting down there being quiet looks like. Uh, really not seeing anything major across that area. Looks like a three-pointer. An older quake there from yesterday. A uh, quick glance at the GeoNet servers here. We'll just run through this real quick. 2.6. A couple other earthquakes out there uh, from yesterday. Uh, a little bit of swarming, it looks like, going around here across this area. Those look like legit earthquakes localized to uh, this area right here. I'm seeing just barely some of these uh, readings showing up over here slightly. The stronger ones obviously will show up, uh, you know, more uh, uh, more clearly. Uh, but there's definitely uh, some earthquake activity going on there. That's at the, uh, looks like the southern edge of the uh, Kermadec Trench. There's a little bit of activity stirring up there in the last 24. And uh, some activity down south as well, it looks like, along the, uh, the uh, Alpine Fault area. Uh, we'll continue to watch that though. A lot of areas are definitely overdue in that region. Uh, Hawaii. Anything major going on over here? Doesn't look like it. Uh, no huge swarms across the Kilauea volcano. A little bit of uh, earthquake activity here off on the, um, the southeast here, east of the uh, Kilauea volcano. It's somewhat new out here, somewhat shallow as well. Uh, so let's go check out the latest. Um, informational statement here from the USGS in terms of volcano activity. That update was put out today, it looks like, uh, January 8th. Uh, Kilauea Volcano is currently not erupting, and it's the same thing that has been said here over the past couple months. Um, still talking about how the summit region uh, remains at a high level of inflation and at its highest level. Uh, since any time uh, since the 2018 eruption. So it looks like over the past 24 hours, tilt showed little change and remained relatively flat. So let's go look at it and see how the tilt looks as of right now. Tilt meaning inflation. Uh, I've been watching this uh, Kilauea volcano area rise and rise and rise since the last eruption back in 2018. But technically, this 
level of inflation right now is at its highest level. Again, as the wording explained there in the USGS uh, statement since 2018. So things are building up, building up, but it does look like we're leveling off here a little bit in the past day. Uh, we'll continue to watch that though. Really haven't seen any major deflation event. Uh, it's just been going up and up and up. That obviously means magma is accumulating below the surface. Uh, quick glance here at one of the uh, the cams. Looks like foggy, maybe cloudy up there. This is an area uh, view or kind of a close-up view of the lava lake area. There is no doubt uh, volcanic gas is building. And again, this can uh, you know this can pop at any second. Um, whether it's going to be there at the uh, summit region in the lava lake area, or um, you know potentially south there. Definitely, uh, you know. Any time, because we're definitely going up on the inflation activity. So we'll watch it and, of course, report back on any major changes that take place out here, should they happen. Uh, Alaska looks like Alaska. I'm sure it's beautiful this time of year. I love wintertime up there. <clears throat> it's absolutely stunning. I have yet to go up there in the summertime. Uh, but I was up there in December uh, a couple years ago, a few years ago. It's been a few days up there and explored the area of Alaska it's absolutely beautiful uh, 2.6 north of Anchorage aside from that most of the uh, activity very small microquake activity uh, so zoom in South America here looks like some activity from yesterday and today relatively deep uh, I'm sure the earthquake 3d program is going to show some further activity which is normal and typical out here in the smaller range but uh, just kind of a slow day in a way for earthquake activity right now. All right, let's move on to uh, space weather activity. See if there's anything else in the uh, weather, space weather world. Uh, looks like we're having a little bit of sea flare activity currently as we speak. Notice this little spike here on the chart. Let me zoom in and show you guys a little bit of sea flare activity in the sea range. Overall, the last three days have shown uh, just um, minimal solar flare activity, nothing really getting up into the inflare class, but it is, you know, kind of spiky there, indicating activity. And I believe a lot of that movement is coming off of, uh, looks like maybe this region right here. And we do have a couple more active regions as across the, uh, Eastern limb over here. Uh, let's see what we got for the sunspots that are currently facing us. There's a lot of them. Goodness. There's quite a bit, but, uh, we could have thousands of sunspots up here and if they're not complex enough magnetically complex you get stable sunspots and not quite the amount of flaring uh, that we would see if these were all uh, super complex uh, unfortunately this region right here um, as massive as it is has a couple split cores here that's not going to really allow for too much flaring um, it was looking promising here a day or so ago i uh, got a mess of sunspots up here. Hard to say uh, if I had to pick one as far as any sunspot region to watch. Um, we are showing a little bit of growth among this little section here and potentially down here that uh, may harbor some, uh, some flaring activity. And of course, we'll get a little bit better perspective view of a newer sunspot about ready to make its presence known on the earth facing side of the sun. Uh, right now, not a whole lot of roars in the forecast. Look at that KP index there over the last um, couple days. Fairly quiet. No forecast there for the auroras for now. Very minimal. All right, uh, weather outlook here today. We have a bunch of stuff going on here. This is a National Weather Service watch warning and advisory display down here in the yellow that is across the uh, areas of Texas and the Louisiana. Um, these guys are underneath a tornado watch. Uh, of course, that is a severe potential out now, out there right now. There is quite a few storms brewing up, as shown here on the local radar. Let me bring up the uh, image just a little bit bigger here so we can see. Uh, north of Houston area, some of these storms look like they are trying to rotate there. I get that little hook echo that uh, most storm chasers are uh, very familiar with. 
But uh, yeah, right now, Galveston, Houston, uh, Beaumont, tornado watch out here, it looks like. And uh, it's just getting going. This thing could uh, definitely last throughout the uh, good portion of the evening. Looks like there's some type of flash flood advisory over here. Um, let's check out the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, see if they've done anything different here since last night. Enhanced region in this zone. Um, and that's mainly for a huge 10% hatched area. Uh, when it's dashed like that, that means the uh, greatest probability here. A uh, 10% or higher probability of seeing an EF2 to an EF5, which EF5, obviously the, the strongest tornadoes, uh, within 25 miles of a point. Uh, so heads up, weather aware, uh, must, must be weather aware today, that's for sure, down there across this area. Did see some wind damage already kicking up uh, from some of these thunderstorms. Could be straight line winds, could be inflow. Uh, either way, it's going to be a windy day out there. Um, I just hope everyone stays safe and uh, make sure you have uh, a plan to get to safety if you are underneath a tornado warning. Um, definitely be weather aware. Some hail potential out there as well. It looks like 15% chance. Um, and <clears throat> That looks like probability of one inch diameter hell or larger within about 25 miles of a point. I ran into some of that uh, last year when I was out there storm chasing in Texas. I get some big hail. Goodness. And uh, it's almost impossible to get out of. All right. Uh, what else we got here, folks? I think that's about it. Um, again, really nothing going on in Yellowstone. A look at the seismograph stations here. They all look uh, calm. I'm going to drop this canyon station right here. Uh, because it looks a little odd. It doesn't look like it's properly uh, reading. Uh, and that will bring up the Lake Yellowstone station here. So any earthquake activity will show up here across that region. Uh, but for the most part, all the seismograph stations here look calm, clear, quiet. And uh, again, stay safe out there if you're out in the uh, Texas area eastward. A lot of severe weather out there, unfortunately. But uh, that is very common with the El Nino pattern. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later today, later tonight, uh, unless something major happens. Have a good Monday. Stay safe, folks.